Hello and welcome to a special episode of Breaking Down Bergman. I'm here in Montreal, Canada at the World Film Festival where I had a chance to talk with director Diraj Apolkar about his new film Liv and Ingmar. It's a documentary about the relationship between actress Liv Allman and director Ingmar Bergman. And he said, you know, I had a strange dream last night. I dreamt that you and I are painfully connected. And painful it was but connected it was. I used to be a happy person, a very happy person, but you know, five years doing his films, I was now also getting a kind of depressed, neurotic person. Skrik in Well, the film is called Leave and Mar, and it is uh, based on the 42 years and 12 films long relationship between Lee Woolman and Ingmar Bergman. Uh, but this is an affectionate outlook, uh, yet a very truthful uh, account of this extraordinary relationship uh, of one of the most um, celebrated couples in the history of cinema and two great artists. Uh, although the film is not about two famous, very great artists, the film is about two human beings about a man and a woman, about two friends, two companions and soulmates. And it is then, that's why Universal, this film has been seen by somebody in India and somebody in Cuba and somebody in Japan and in America and Norway. And, and they all react in the same way. They cry, they hurt, they feel, they get, they're moved. And uh, it's incredible to see that really, it does reach out to people uh, irrespective of their nationalities or their genders or their uh, and that's incredible I think. Can you give me an idea of how you came to this project specifically? Well yes uh, well I'm an architect and I studied architecture in India and then I worked in the heart of the commercial Hindi film industry which is unfortunately now called Bollywood it shouldn't be uh, in, in Mumbai for six years and it was an incredible experience I learned so much working with incredible artists in front of the camera, behind the camera. And then I kind of uh, left to work on my own feature film. And then I wanted to study cinema, so I landed up in London, uh, in uh, Goldsmiths, University of London. Okay. And uh, after the course, I started my own company and de started developing projects and started you know, putting things together. And uh, how I came about doing this project, really, well, I read about, um, I, I, I found Leaves' book, Changing, in the house of another very legendary filmmaker, Indian filmmaker, who's no more now, uh, Zul Velani. And I, I couldn't keep the book down. It was incredible. It spoke to me, you know, it had something in it which was, um, there, there, there was a lot written, but there was also a lot unwritten. And I realized that only a person who has gone through life uh, and has, you know, gone through so much pain, uh, so much love, so much anguish, can write like this with so much dignity. So the book stayed with me, and I took it, brought it with me to London. But uh, it was in 2007 when Mr. Bergman passed away that I was flipping through the papers, trying to see if Leave had said something, and there was nothing. And I realized there would be nothing. And that's when the film just came to me. You know, and I, I wrote it down as a piece of poem and I wrote to her. My friend Christina, she was uh, coming from Norway to stay with me in London and she asked me what should she bring for me uh, from Norway. And I said, could you please bring Lee Woolman's address? And, <laughs> and somehow she found, found out this address and, uh, and I, I sent a letter to, to her address. And I remember still 23rd of February, 2008, 2.30 p.m. London time. <laughs> yeah, you can't, I cannot forget. The phone rang and the voice on the phone said, hello, this is Lee Woolman. And I sat down and took it in, really. I couldn't believe that she had called. But this has happened ever since that moment. Every time she has been 
accessible and approachable and real. And then, well, I told her I want to do something like this, you know. And she was reluctant but okay, and then it took some time. She said, if you find the money, I'll give an interview. In terms of finding the money for a project like this, yeah. I'm curious, um, what, sort of, what sort of interest did you receive? Because obviously these days, financing is not easy to get for anything. No. Uh, I really feel that a project first needs to have it needs to be developed. I have realized and I've really understood the importance of having a developed project so that when somebody sees it, they feel confident enough to make it. But the most important step is to find the right producer. And I wrote to almost 60 to 70 producers in Stockholm, in Gothenburg, in Sweden, and really nobody wanted to do it. In fact, some of them were even critical about it. How so? I was surprised and I don't know still why. Some, some of the remarks were snide, some of the remarks were cynical and jealous and I couldn't understand why. This is a film about one of the greatest artists from Sweden, about uh, so much work that has been done in Sweden. But they didn't want to do it and in a way I'm really happy that they refused because it led me to Nordic stories. Uh, through an actress, Ranghil Lund, who I met in Scotland, Edinburgh. She said, I'll go and get a meeting in Norway. And she went and met them. And they said, yes, we want to do it. And I met them. So it's important to find that first step, somebody else who believes in the project. You know, there are, there are pain in the world, big pain, that you and I so far have not felt of, of hunger and destruction and many things like that. But there is one pain which is enormous too. And that is to be left. That is a very lonely and deep and hurtful pain. Certain artists are great because of the work they put out. They become timeless. And as I said, uh, I'm not surprised there is a resurgence. It will keep happening. Ingmar Bergman will not fade away. This is what I honestly feel. Um, because that cinema or the work of art, theater, what he's done, it's so brutally honest. It's so incredible that it holds a mirror to the audience in which you can recognize some of yourself emotions that you have refused to deal with before and you go through a catharsis whether you like it or no you cannot escape that and you come out a little better a little resolved and that work of art remains relevant in your life you know I this is something I have to say I think yes on that level this project is relevant because yes students film students or anybody for that matter have to see Ingmar Bergman, they have to see Fellini, Kurosawa, Ray, Antonioni, Tarkovsky, you know, they have to see Chaplin because something can corrupt seeing bad art thrown at you for such a long time. And when mainstream has become so anesthetized and so it's almost, you know, strange kind of prostitution it has become so horrible in that sense that good quality, you know, where will they see this? Where will they recognize this? So I think it's really important that they see Bergman. It will definitely start a process. Whether they like it or whether they hate it, at least they'll talk about it. At least they'll see it. So I don't really understand how some, some people do have the opinion that they do. They just aren't fans of Bergman. But there's yeah, yeah, his, I've read that. His, his films are so diverse, and there's going to be something in there, in my opinion, that's going to resonate with you. It might not be. The but it's fair. It's fair not to like an artist. True. It's fair. It's fair yeah. not to like somebody. You know, like I might like somebody. Somebody else doesn't. Yeah. But you can't discard before watching Bergman. That is the one thing I will say. You can discard if you don't like. If he doesn't talk to you but you he's not one of those artists you can be indifferent to yeah. you have to see this is mandatory you have to see because this is yeah this is a great artist mm -hmm. 
My favorite Bergman film is Shame. I always feel that uh, in Shame, when Max von Sydow's character Jan uh, screams out, and there she's sitting, Eva, in front of a burning house, touching the dead body of a little child, and he says, "Eva, come back," and Lee Volman turns. Will that fade away? Can it fade away? It can never fade away. The way uh, Edward Munch won't fade away, the way Mozart won't fade away, Ingmar Bergman won't fade away. Neither will Lee Goldman because this is they have they have given everything. It comes from a very pure and and honest point of their own selves, and that will always be recognized in art. That will always be revered in art. You know, it will be remembered. Forever, I don't think there may be. There may come times, but uh, this will sustain. This will stay. Is there a specific reason why you think now there's been the, this, this? Yes, maybe I can. I can speculate. I don't know, but maybe because you know, I f- do feel that we are living in in shallow times. We are living in times where X Factor is the biggest entertainment, or some random reality television. Where it gives you nothing, it just it it is hollow and and shallow, and that is the idea of entertainment. Just because it works somehow, just because it makes money or whatever, and you know, so much is being spoon-fed to us as audience. So much is being shoved down our throats from every angle. Media is telling us what it means to be successful. You know, from every single angle. Uh, yes the audience will take it up to a certain point but after that they will they will get tired they will want to look for true cinema they will want to look for good cinema you know you watch you can take bad art in, absorb it for some time but then you will require something pure you will require because you you cannot survive like this this is the the most horrid thing that can happen you know this whole definition of short lived uh one you, you i call it the one night stand with art yeah okay it will be good but while it lasts but will it change anything in your life it's always you always end up seeking the substance absolutely at some, at some absolutely point. yeah at some point yes yes so all this will come and go but uh, good art great art will never fade away